Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm very excited to bring you a review for the brand new Transformers Legacy Autobot Skids. This is the first Skids that we've received in the retail assortment, anyway, since the Thrilling 30 Deluxe. But that toy was based more on the IDW comic appearance than it was the original, you know, Generation 1 toy or cartoon design. So from this figure, I would expect a pretty faithful update to the classic design, and hopefully we won't find ourselves disappointed like we did with a certain other blue deluxe Autobot that we may have just reviewed. That all being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Skids' packaging, then we'll put it up, we'll check the instructions, and then we'll see Skids himself in both vehicle and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Skids comes in your standard deluxe legacy packaging, very similar to the War for Cybertron stuff. Get all your branding and stuff right here on the front, his name. Get a half window where you can see uh, the Skids figure. And if you didn't see my uh, RC review and you haven't really been in the loop, uh, just to let you know, there are no more plastic windows. It is just, it's just a hole, it's just an opening. So I, hopefully that won't become an issue. Right here in the center, you get this really nice artwork with Skids' vehicle mode. He's got his weapons deployed here, firing off at something. Then he's even got his new little Energon axe looking thing up top. Then if we turn it, the way they're doing these, um, you know, robot mode artwork things now, is that instead of just one picture, there are two and it's split. And you have a pretty much full body shot and then you have a close up of the face. So that's an interesting little take that they've done. You can see his name actually written in Ancient Autobot here. Then our full body shot with him firing his big combined weapon and a close up of the face. On the back, we get renders of the toy in both vehicle and robot modes. It takes 14 steps to transform, so he's not overly complex. And if you look closely at the legs, you'll see something I'm probably going to be harping on quite a bit about and you know something that a lot of other people are very put off by. There's, I mean, it's just nothing, just empty space, void. So, <clears throat> you know, they want to charge more and more money for these things. These are up to like 25 bucks now, but then you get this. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, we get a little window here showing off his combined weapon that you can form with his regular guns and then the Energon weapon there. And then you get your QR code, which you can use to unlock a character bio on the Transformers website. And then lastly, we get our legacy Autobot side panel. Here we have Skid's instruction sheet. You can see his name and render right here, your logos all around. We open this up and this entire, well, most of the first page is dedicated to his instructions. So this first bit just shows you how to fold his wings back out of the package. And then this gets into different ways that you can configure his weapons. Interestingly, they don't show off the standard, like, or I guess classic configuration of having the two-barreled weapon attached to his forearm and then having him wield this one as its own standalone. They just have you combine them, and then he either holds his Energon weapon like some sort of firearm, or you can put all three of these together and wield it. But you have some other options, too. He can wield this like an axe. He can wield these pieces separately from each other. You got some, some ways of going about this. And then we get to the transformation from robot all the way to vehicle. It shows you two different ways to mount the weapons on him. You can either attach the two silver weapons side by side and the axe bit on top, or you can combine the whole thing and attach them all to the roof. So they don't show off every combination you can do, but it gives you a good idea of you know what this guy's capable of. Now we get to see Skids in his vehicle mode, and I have him in what I'd call his you know, more classic configuration. We got his two old school weapons just attached to the sides here, and then this thing's just kind of on the top, staying out of the way. I mean, I guess he could like drive under stuff and you know cut with the axe. And one thing that I find interesting is that his blues are much darker than they appear on the renders. Um, and the shade of blue they use he was a good bit closer to the original toy rather than the original animation model, which is kind of surprising because the big focus lately has been on cartoon accuracy. Uh, personally, I like this. I, I like the more 80s looking color scheme than the brighter blue that the renders, you know, alluded to. So I, I, I dig that. I like this very muted kind of blue that they use. Uh, you can also see he's got this really nice white, or sorry, not white, red and silver striping along the side there. 
He's even got a molded gas cap right there. It's pretty cool. Door handles. The wheels are pretty nice. The front wheels do have a peg through them, which is not great, but they the pegs are at least black, so they blend in instead of being, you know, blue or red or something and looking pretty obnoxious. He's got all this area right here is clear plastic. So that means it's painted, but the paint color very much matches the actual blue plastic. They did a very good job there. You can unfortunately see this like red armature bit inside the windshield, which is a little bit immersion breaking, but not too bad. The front's painted up very, very well. He's got a silver grill area with yellow headlights, black bumper with some red accents there. He's got his Autobot symbol on the hood. The back, of course, gets neglected like is usually the case with car uh, transformers, right? You get all the, the headlights and everything painted and almost never the taillights. Exhaust pipes are blue, so. You know, I'm not gonna hold it too much against him because I just come to expect this at this point, but it is a little disappointing. You know, they're like, well, who looks at the back of the car anyway? Why should we waste money painting it? Uh, but I will say for what it is, I think it looks quite nice. It just really does a fantastic job of looking like his classic vehicle mode. And now if you guys want to see his alternate configuration, you can do that. Just pop all the weapons off here. That hole's a little tight there. And then what you do, is you plug this bad boy. Oh, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> plug this into here. So just kind of combine them and it should slot right in there pretty well. You get a little bit of wiggle room, so you have to straighten it out. And then you put this ax bit on top. Like so to where this peg is going to kind of cover this barrel right here. So you get his big super weapon. And then you just put it back on the roof facing forward. And you can make a um, bit more dangerous looking. And, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, combined super weapons go, I think it looks okay. You know, it is a little weird blending the aesthetics of, you know, these silver metallic looking guns with this Energon looking blue thing. But as far as the shape and everything of it, I think it looks all right. You know, it's a lot better than some of the stuff we saw out of like Siege and Earthrise, where some of these, you know, weapon modes were just two cars smashed together. So I think for what it is, it works pretty well. Okay, now we get a nice comparison shot with the previous G1 Skids toy that was released, and this is the Thrilling 30 Skids, who is based off the IDW comic appearance. Now, interestingly, his color scheme is actually really, really off for how he appears in the comics. This really light blue they went with uh, kind of came from out of nowhere. In the comics, his blue is actually a good bit closer to this. Not quite as desaturated of a blue, but about, you know, that dark or so. And he also had like a bunch of red highlights. Uh, so if you do want something that matches the comic a lot better, I would go for the Japanese Legends version of this mold. It really, you know, nails the look. But you can see the difference between something that's clearly modeled after the original, you know, 80s based car, and then one that is made to look a bit more modern, you know, something you would see in like the late 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, so just two very different takes on it. I guess if you want to, you can kind of headcanon this as like the original version of the character and then some sort of a classics era, you know, upgrade or reimagining to him. But I think they both have really stellar looking vehicle modes and they're both very, very functional too. You know, good, good wheel turning here. Everything just works out nicely. So I like them. I like this guy a lot more if you didn't have the clip in the wheel, but I mean... I can complain about that till I'm blue in the face. It's not going to change anytime soon. Okay, now it's time to transform skids. So if you haven't already, go ahead and remove his accessories. And we're going to open up his doors. Like this. Gonna come loose. Be careful, because they are clear plastic the entire way through. So you get that. Gonna fold his back wheels into his feet. Gonna pop this loose. And you're going to bring this whole area up. So this uh, windshield's tabbed into the hood right here. You have to carefully work it loose because those tabs go in there pretty tightly. So just be very careful. There you go. Get loose. Put it up like that. Let's go ahead and lift 
all this up and out like so. You're gonna free his arms from the underside. Swing them outwards. Get those nice and out of the way. And you want to extend this forward. So the like middle back hinge here. Extend that forward. Bring them up like so. Separate the feet. Close the shins. Push his little car hood down onto his chest. And you're gonna rotate this. Rotate his arms forward. Okay. Make the wings point back. And now here, you have one of two options. You can bring his little backpack here down to give him a nice clean look, or you can bring it up, extending out this little armature here, so it pops into place, and you give him the look of his original toy and his cartoon model, where you have basically a windshield just kind of coming up over the back of his head. Uh, either one is fine, either one is equally doable. It's up to you which style you want to go for, if you want like a cleaner style or a more classic style. But there you go, that's the robot mode. Now I have two things to say about this robot mode. One is that it mostly looks quite good. Uh, I actually like a lot of what they're doing here. I have two qualms with this and they're both aesthetic. The insides of the legs, as you can see, are just like completely hollow. Not even like painted in here. So this is all blue, it's all blue in here. Doesn't really look great. Looks very compromised. And then you have the back of his head, which has this panel on there because it becomes part of the hood here. And he's he's never had that before. Like, usually when you get something weird like that, like you get this weird piece of kibble on a character's head or something, it's because that's how they just classically always looked and they're trying to recreate that. That's not the case here. Not Like, none of the Skids toys, whether it's the G1, the Generations, the Masterpiece, any of that, not his cartoon model, none of them had this flat panel on the back of his head. So that is something they did purely out of convenience to make the engineering simpler. I can't say I'm a fan. Now, is it the worst thing ever? No. Uh, you know, it's something that I can kind of ignore. Honestly, the empty legs bother me more. And they don't ruin the toy, but they do really make him stray from what I would consider perfection. Because everything else about this guy so far is really, really great looking. His colors, the paint, all that looks phenomenal. His shoulders work very well. He's got, you know, the universal shoulders, the bicep swivel, bending elbows, wrist swivel, got a full waist swivel, universal hips, bending knees, thigh swivel, and ankle tilt. It's kind of the whole package. And then of course the ball jointed head. And he looks good. Like 95% of this guy looks fantastic. There's just some details here that really don't do him justice. And, uh, I, I think it's a real shame because he is so close to being just perfect. Now, of course, we want to take a look at his accessories. So the first configuration I'll show you is just his classic one, where you take his two silver weapons and you just plug them onto his forearms like this. And that's it, right? Like that's how the classic toy and show model looked. Now, interestingly, the um, single barrel weapon here is based on his show appearance, not the toy appearance. The toy appearance had a much bigger rifle. And then for this, in this configuration, I would typically just leave this, you know, plugged onto his back or something and just keep it out of the way. Let him revel in his G1 goodness. Or if you don't like that, we can go with another option. We can combine these two. That's in there pretty tightly. Okay. Get out. There you go. Pull this one out. We'll combine these like what we saw in the vehicle mode. And just have him wield this bigger weapon in his hand. And then he can wield this. Now the instructions have him hold this like a firearm, right? Something like that. Which is fine, though to me, I mean, it's already going to be using this barrel with the fully combined weapon. So I personally would rather see him do this 
and wield it like an axe. That way he gets a ranged weapon and a melee weapon. And I think this looks really nice as an axe. I like the patterning right here at the base of the blade. So I would personally use the axe in this configuration. Or we can just do what we did in the vehicle mode and make one big combined weapon. So you just have your silver stuff and then you plug this into the top again, place it right over the barrel of your top silver weapon and you get a big old honking blaster here. And unlike a lot of toys that have this whole modular weapon system, I think all of his combinations look just fine, honestly. You have his two classic weapons, which look good either on his arms or, you know, put together as a big blaster. You got this thing, which I think looks great as either an axe or a ranged weapon. And then you got this big combined thing, which doesn't look too ridiculous, honestly. It, it looks like it works. Again, the, you know, blue against silver is a little weird because part of his weapon is made of energon, part of it's made of metal. But the shape of it and all that, it, I think it's good. I think everything here is serviceable. And here's our robot comparison with the Thrilling 30 skids. And they're very, very different looking from one another. Not just in color, but in form. Just like in the vehicle modes, the Thrilling 30 toy is a lot less boxy, but this guy's also just armed to the nines, like to an absurd degree. He's got two sets of these wrist-mounted gun barrels, as well as two handheld weapons, shoulder cannons, and then missile launching pods on his shoulders. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this guy is so, so overarmed that it's almost comical. Um, but one thing that's funny is, honestly, he is so different in everything from the shape of his body, even to the shape of his head, which only barely, barely resembles the original, to where he may as well be a different character. I think IDW skids and G1 skids are just very night and day different from one another. You know, this guy, you kind of see him as your quiet, mild manner type character, which is why he's so often forgotten about. And then you get this one who's supposed to be like the most goodest, secretest agent ever, you know? I mean, he's good at all the things and he has the mysterious, you know, amnesiac past. And, you know, could pretty much just do whatever he wants. And like, everybody loves him. I mean, total inverse of character, really. So I, I can't really compare them as far as saying which one's better or worse. I, I see them as almost two completely different characters. Almost in the way as say like this skids and the live action movie skids. They're really just not the same guy at all. And even though this guy hits you know, a few different design beats like the door wings, the hood chest, the red feet, all that. They're very, very difficult to compare to each other because they do almost nothing alike, which is fine honestly it just means that you don't necessarily have to you know choose one or the other or have one be a replacement or an upgrade to the other they can just exist as two wholly separate characters that fill very very different roles in their respective universes and this completes our look at the new transformers legacy skids i have to admit i am very pleasantly surprised with this toy when i first saw the cgi renders for it I thought I was going to hate it. I really did. Between, you know, the very, very empty legs, the panel on his head, and the color of blue that they were showing off in the renders, I thought I wouldn't like this at all. Luckily, getting in hand, the blue has been fixed to be much closer to the original, and I think that really also helps the look of the toy, because it does kind of help conceal some of the uh, flaws with this toy from your eyes. Like right here, you can see that his legs are still empty, but it's not quite as noticeable because it uses a very dark shade. It's kind of covered in shadow. And the same goes for the panel on the head too. It just kind of causes it to, you know, fade away and blend in a bit. So he ends up looking nicer than I thought he would. Doesn't mean the problems are gone. They're still there, but they don't bother me as much as I was expecting them to. And then we get to what's actually here. He comes with both of his classic weapons, as well as an additional weapon, which you can either use or ignore. Uh, great posability, great tolerances, all that. You have the option of, you know, keeping his classic back kill or just folding it away and making it cleaner. Uh, the paint that's there is phenomenal. The silver on his legs and stuff looks really nice. The red striping. He's still lacking on the back of the vehicle mode. Like, this should be painted and the taillights should be painted and all that. But that's really nothing new at this point with car-based, you know, deluxe transformers and generations. 
Uh, so while it's unfortunate, it's nothing exceptionally bad. So I'm not gonna you know, put it against him too much and just accept that's what Hasbro's given us. But yeah, I mean, the paint on the chest, all that, he looks like a very faithful update to the original toy. And I, I love him for that. I think he's a phenomenal figure overall. You know, if you can get past, you know, the budget cuts here and there, what you get is a very, very solid toy and easily works as, you know, your new chug version of Skids. So I'm very happy with him. And what's really cool about this guy too is he's got a lot of uh, repaint and retool potential. We already know he has Burnout coming in the Velocitron subline, and Burnout is a black redeco of this guy based on one of his several Diaclone variations. Uh, and Burnout is actually a female character, interestingly enough. I don't know if they actually changed the head at all to reflect that. I mean, they didn't do it on the Thrilling 30 version, so probably not. Uh, so that's coming down the pike. And then, of course, I'd be shocked if we didn't get his kind of go-to retool, which is Crosscut, who's, you know, a silver version with a new head. So I'm sure Crosscut's coming. And then Masterpiece introduced us to the character of Reboost, who is based on a red variant of the Diaclone toy that would become Skids and Crosscut. Uh, so that was really cool, and, you know, he would be an easy read echo to throw into, like, Selects or something here. And that does leave us with just one other figure, and it was another red Diaclone toy that was very similar to what is now Reboost, but has uh, less blue on it, especially on the head. It has a red head instead of a blue one. I don't know if they're actually going to do like a second, almost all red version of this. It would seem kind of redundant. Maybe they will. But honestly, if we just got the four, so Skids, Burnout, Crosscut, and Reboost, I'd be perfectly satisfied. I'd be like, you know what? We cover all the major bases. One minor, slightly more red variation is not very important to me. I mean, I wouldn't turn it down if they, if they made it, but I'm not counting on it. So, yeah, I look forward to getting those guys because they should all feel just as solid as him. Looking forward to how they do the new crosscut head, if they do that. And I'm, I'm really happy to own this, and I think you guys will be too. Of course, that is just how I feel about Skids. Now I want to know what you all think of him. Are you looking forward to adding this guy to your collection? Or if you already have, are you happy you did? Or do you not like him? Are the flaws of this toy just too much for you and you can't bring yourself to do it? Or is there some other reason? Maybe you just don't like Skids as a character? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this brand new look at Transformers Legacy Autobot Skids. And with all that said, I will see you next time.